Hello everybody, welcome back to the channel, and today I'm going to be doing a review on Grand Theft Auto Vice City. Just like in the last video, we discussed how GTA 3's physics and gameplay and everything else was pretty much put into perspective, and pretty much has made big improvements since its release in 1997, when the first two games were released on Game Boy and of course the original PlayStation. This game takes place in a fantasy uh, state known as Vice City, which is the uncopyrighted version of Miami. Florida. Now this game brought a little bit more extra to the Grand Theft Auto series where it basically brought into nightclubs, more street gangs, different vehicle types, and of course the culture itself. The biggest takeaway I could take from this game was the motion blur. The motion blur was very annoying in that when it first released on the PlayStation and PlayStation 2 and the original Xbox, this game had motion blur issues like No Tomorrow. You'd be running around everywhere and that motion blur would just make you dizzy and it just it kind of just took away from the excitement that the game would bring. It also brought in a whole new assortment of different weapons. There was three different weapon types. There was the weapon types 1, weapons types 2, weapons types 3. The weapons types 1 consisted of all of the original weapons from GTA 3. And then the second type would be the new and implemented weapons brought into GTA Vice City. As you start the game, you start into a cutscene that cuts back to Tommy Versetti's early days when he was representing the Ferelli family mob in Liberty City. Right there to your right, you see Sonny Ferelli and two of his goons discussing Tommy Versetti himself, who was the main protagonist of this installment of the game. He was Sonny Ferelli's known right-hand man who did 10, or 5 to 10 years, I think it was, for the family. I guess somebody fucked up a deal or something and... Tommy wound up getting pinched for it and wound up doing some pretty serious time. But now, he's out, and Sonny needs some help taking over Vice City. He wants to expand his cocaine operation down to Vice City. So he sets up a deal with some Colombians, which probably was the biggest mistake you can make. You make the deal with Colombians, you don't know, well, you get shit on <laughs> big time. As that goes on, the plot kind of thickens. You meet your corrupt, crooked lawyer, Ken Rosenberg, who's more of a coward than he is a man. Or a lawyer, for that matter. But a kind of funny thing is, cool Easter egg, every time you get busted in the game, you can hear <laughs> Ken Rosenberg phoning into the police department saying, Tommy Versetti is an innocent man. It's kind of funny. It's actually pretty cool. But it kind of leans true into Ken Rosenberg picking him up from the airport, taking him to the deal where it all goes bad. At that point, well, you're out for revenge to find the people who not only torched the deal, but killed your friends and pretty much gets you framed for stealing from Sonny. Sonny will call you five or six, maybe ten times throughout the entire game wondering, where is my money? <laughs> Typical mob boss, pissed off at the world. Through this time, the physics and the gameplay itself, pretty much the same as GTA 3, not much improvements, the only difference is now you can fly dodo planes and helicopters. Bear in mind, if you play GTA 3 long enough, you can actually fly a dodo plane from the airport. It isn't very act It's not active at all with the water. It's one you have to actually fly on land, and it was a lot more trickier to fly in GTA 3. Vice City kind of picked up the pace on the flying physics and the and the mechanics with it. It wasn't any much better than 3's, but, it, you know, you get the picture. Helicopters were a lot easier to fly. It was simple left, right, tilt, tilt type of thing. If you didn't know how to fly a helicopter, well, you probably <laughs> should get your head examined. But it introduced a whole new assortment of different things. You can, you know... No different than GTA 3. Drive boats, fly helicopters. Couldn't fly helicopters in GTA 3. I'm not sure exactly why, but as you can see in this footage here, that's where the deal goes bad. And you're pretty much fleeing for your life. But you meet pretty interesting characters along the way, such as Phil Cassidy, Colonel Juan Garcia Cortez, Mercedes, and so much more that bring the broad story to Vice City to life. Now, just like in GTA 3, there's three main islands. Uh, Starfish Island... I think this is the Little Havana side of things. Oh, sorry. There's Washington Beach, Starfish Island, and then there's the other side. I forget what it's called, unfortunately. Because I this is like my, my least favorite game for, well, the reasons I've already brought up. The motion blur. The textures were real buggy, as you can see right here. They're really bugged out, and it's really annoying. You can't see the license plate. You can't read anything, but it's PlayStation 2, so you can't expect much. But... They brought back the little mar the little markers you walk into to start your missions. 
They have interesting characters out on the street. Same thing. Civilians will talk to you, interact, fight you, try to kill you, and, well, <laughs> it's GTA. What do you expect? You're going to try to rob somebody. They're going to kill you back like in Texas. <laughs> so sad. But you stay at the Ocean View ho Hotel to lay low while you try to figure out who stole the money and the cocaine that you were deal you know picking up from the deal they stole the money and the cocaine go figure typical colombian deal gone bad eventually you get at war with the haitians which haitian gangs pretty dangerous down in south beach same thing with like you know the colombians you don't want to piss them off and you can see right there all of those kilos of uncut cocaine right there that's the whole concept of it is about pretty much bringing sunny power but in that time Tommy Versetti kind of discovers, well, fuck, Sonny, I'm going to build my own empire. I don't need that shit. Fifteen years he did for Sonny Ferrelli, and all Sonny does is basically make a dick out of him. So he's going to make a dick out of Sonny and pretty much not only make a profit off of the benefit that he bailed him out of jail, got him paroled, and sent him to Vice City to take care of some garbage, and, well, he took advantage of it and became a success. If you play through the game all the way through... You can pretty much buy all these different businesses as fronts for Tommy's criminal activities, which eventually accumulate assets, which is your income that you could add to your bank account to purchase more businesses and homes, real estate, to keep all your ill-gotten gains intact. Now, reasons for this game not being as successful as its predecessor is, well, obviously, motion blur issues, texture issues, and the mechanics were really stiff for me. Sorry, not mechanics. The controls were very stiff for me. I didn't like his walk style. Tommy Versetti walked literally like he had shit in his pants the entire game. I liked the whole Hawaiian shirt concept. It stuck with the theme of the game, but come on now. Let's be real. They could have done way better with the clothing aspect. And it feels like, you know, they have a good line of voice actors. Ray, Ray Liotta, God rest his soul, did a fantastic job with the voice of Tommy Versetti. But they could have gotten better voice actors for the rest of the the game, you know. <laughs> I mean, I get it. There was one guy. He's the leader of the Diablos. Is it Diablos? No. Some Colombian gang. The, it, it's uh, the guy who uh, played Machete. I forget his name from time to time because, well, he hasn't done many acting gigs. But th this game, for me, gets a solid 7 out of 10. Gameplay was great. Mechanics were great. Graphics were terrible. It felt like it took a GTA 3 put the kind of copied and pasted over here and somehow they fucked up the graphics really bad it's like the textures went from looking okay to god awful they were terrible i've never seen like, look at their hands are literally look like they're glued together if you look really closely at his right hand here it looks like it's literally glued together it's got to look uncomfortable and it kind of it's just the little things you notice you know, some games are meant to be great, some games are meant to be okay, and some are just meant to be just bad. And this is one of those examples that's okay. But moving forward, the missions were solid. The level of difficulty it took with these missions was... Pff, my god, it had my head banging on the desk. And I didn't bear in mind, I played these games on the original PlayStation 2 version, and I wasn't banging my head on the desk. I was constantly pounding my hand on my entertainment center where I had my little square TV. Yes, that's right, I had a 90s TV hooked up to my PS2, and I'm bashing my controller onto the desk because I don't know why I keep failing the mission. Then again, a kid my age shouldn't have been playing this, but hell, back in, these, back in those days, as millennials, these games were considered making you one of the coolest kids in school. <clears throat> Not always the case. Um... But if you really, really want my honest opinion of this game, it's, like I said, okay. The textures were terrible. You know, the the texture budget, you could raise it, but it didn't make much of a difference. It was terrible. The bushes looked like literally paper clippings, same as the trees, and they're just stamped onto a, a solid item, um, <laughs> a solid, I don't even know what to call that. Like, that doesn't even look like a friggin' tree. It just looks like a big stick with a bunch of paper stapled to it. It's utterly ridiculous. Like, the boat looks great. Look at this, the size of this cruise ship. I mean, that looks great. The facial expressions on these characters make them look like Resident Evil zombie characters. It's utterly ridiculous. But then again, you know, once we get into the San Andreas concept, yeah, San Andreas, great game. 
when we get to the review for that game, well, I'll have a lot more to say about that considering it's one of the longer GTA games that lasts literally 16 hours. You get literally a good 14 hours worth of gameplay to this one, so San Andreas is literally only two hours longer than this one. But hands down, it's my least favorite GTA out of the inst out of the first three original 3D installments. Plain and simple, it's a solid 7 out of 10. Mechanics, textures, and of course graphics are the issues here. I say mechanics because the shooting could have been a little bit more polished, but it wasn't. The driving could have done a little bit better because a lot of cars would just like flip over and stuff. So I think what they did, they had the car variations and the handling all screwed up in this game. And never even decided to think, okay, maybe this was a fix. But then again, like I said, it's PS2, you can't expect much. Back in the day, you don't get patch notes. You don't get game patches to improve it. Once the game was released, that was it. That's considered final product. But all in all, 7 out of 10 rating. This game literally delivers the same gory details as the previous predecessor gta 3 the only thing that was better about this was there was more gore you could shoot people's heads off and obviously there was a gore mode where you could blow their legs and their arms off but all, all in all originally you could only have like a good head decapitation i think gta vice city is actually the first game to release uh, its first head decapitation in ps2 history i could be 100 percent wrong rockstar's manhunter or Manhunt could have possibly delivered that first. Hell, even True Crime could have. I could be 100% wrong. Let me know how you guys enjoyed this video. Slap a nice big like on it. Subscribe to the channel if you're new. Ring the notification bell to be notified of upcoming streams and uploads. Let me know how you guys feel about this game in the comments below. And I will see you all in the next one. Take care, guys.